Hello and welcome to this SRC Learning Essential Series video about quality of service and the default scheduler. If you are not familiar with the Service Routing Certification Program, you can learn more by visiting our website at networks.nokia.com src. In this video, we will first explain what is a default scheduler. We will then move on to discuss how traffic is prioritized and scheduled within a default scheduler. Last, we will examine a case study where different types of traffic use the default scheduler on a Nokia 7750 service router. The first step in the quality of service solution is to classify customers' traffic as it is received on ingress. This is the process of identifying different types of packet fields such as TOS bits, source or destination IP addresses, and protocol types. Once traffic is classified, it is assigned one of eight forwarding classes. This way, they will receive individual treatment because each forwarding class will be given different resources. Forwarding classes will be placed into queues. The next step after traffic enters the queue is to schedule the traffic. Scheduling determines when to service and forward a packet in a given queue relative to other queues. Scheduling is done on ingress towards the router fabric or egress out of router interface. Default schedulers are implemented in hardware and are the default method for scheduling queues in the Nokia 7750 service router. Okay, now that we have explained what the default scheduler is, let's take a minute to discuss some of the parameters it uses to schedule traffic. The peak information rate, or PIR, and the committed information rate, or CIR. Peak information rate specifies the maximum average rate at which traffic can be scheduled out of a queue. Traffic received above this rate should expect to be dropped. Committed information rate, or CIR, is bandwidth that is guaranteed for a queue. We will see why CIR is considered guaranteed bandwidth. The scheduler uses the depth of the PIR and the CIR token buckets to help prioritize queues. Often we use the term bucket to emphasize the depth of the buffer or memory used for the CIR and PIR. One token is considered one byte of traffic. In this example, we have three scenarios that show how traffic is scheduled. Q1's traffic has been classified and is receiving at a rate of 4500 kilobits per second. The PIR is 4000 kilobits per second and the CIR is 2000 kilobits per second. The default scheduler checks the PIR bucket and sees that it is full. This means the traffic is scheduled at a rate above PIR from this queue and the scheduler will not schedule a packet from the queue until the depth of its PIR bucket goes below 4000 kilobits per second. For Q2, classified traffic is received at the rate of 1000 kilobits per second. The PIR is configured for 4000 kilobits per second. The CIR is configured for 2000 kilobits per second. The scheduler will schedule packets from the queue as within CIR. The third scenario shows traffic has been classified and Q3 is receiving traffic at a rate of 3000 kilobits per second. The PIR is configured for 4000 kilobits per second and the CIR is scheduled for 2000 kilobits per second. The CIR bucket is full, but the PIR bucket is not full. So traffic is scheduled as above CIR. As mentioned earlier, as traffic is classified on ingress, it can be assigned to one of eight forwarding classes. The forwarding classes then place the packets into queues. More than one forwarding class can be mapped to one queue. By default, forwarding classes determine how the queue will be scheduled. Forwarding classes are placed into two groups, expedite and best effort. Expedited forwarding classes are NC, H1, EF, and H2 and non-expedited or best effort forwarding classes are L1, AF, L2, and BE. Packets in expedited queues are serviced before packets in best effort queues. The administrator can statically configure a queue as best effort, expedited, or configure it dynamically as auto-expedite, which is the default. An auto-expedite queue will be an expedited queue as long as no best effort forwarding class is mapped to it. If at least one of the best effort forwarding classes is mapped to the same queue, the queue will then become a best effort queue. Now that we have discussed CIR, PIR, expedite, and best effort forwarding classes, let's see how the default scheduler will schedule traffic. 
The Nokia 7750 service router has four different types of input-output modules or cards. IOM1 and 2 type default scheduler is implemented differently than the IMM or IOM3 card types. Let's see how it all works with these different types of modules. IOM types 1 and 2 have three steps to scheduling traffic. Expedite queues that are within CR are scheduled first. Next, best effort queues that are within CIR are scheduled. The third step is that both expedite and best effort above CIR is scheduled in a biased round robin format. The biased round robin format guarantees that expedite queues obtain at least 50% of the third pass of the bandwidth if there is enough traffic in these queues. Next, let's look at the card types IMM and IOM3. Expedite queues within CIR are scheduled first. Best effort queues within CIR are scheduled second. Expedite queues that are above CIR are scheduled third, and best effort queues that are above CIR are scheduled last. In this use case, we have an ePipe service that will have two traffic streams sending from the traffic generator. There is a pre-configured SAP ingress policy with classification and queues already configured. The first stream is a UDP stream with a destination port of 16384 received at a rate of 8000 kilobits per second and will be mapped to forward in class EF in the SAP ingress policy. The second stream is a TCP stream with a destination port of 53, also sending at a rate of 8,000 kilobits per second and being mapped to the forwarding class AF in the SAP ingress policy. On PEB, the SAP port is configured with a maximum egress rate of 8,000 kilobits per second. PEB also has a pre-configured SAP egress policy that maps forwarding class EF to Q2 and forwarding class AF to Q3. The queues in the SAP egress policy in PEB have no PIR or CIR configured, just the defaults, which is the max rate of PIR with no CIR. The card type on PEB is an IOM3, and the default scheduler on PEB now has a decision to make. It only has 8,000 kilobits per second of bandwidth to schedule traffic out the SAP, and the aggregator rate of both streams is 16,000 kilobits per second. The default scheduler will schedule all traffic from the Q2 because the forwarding class of EF is an expedite queue by default. Therefore, it will have to drop all traffic for Q3 because it is a best effort queue. We will then change the Q3 parameters so that the PIR and CIR are both 8,000 kilobits per second, therefore giving Q3 a within CIR scheduling preference. We will view how the default schedule schedules all 8,000 kilobits per second of forwarding class AF Q3 traffic and drops forwarding class EF expedite queue traffic because Q2 does not have a within CIR of preference. Let's get started. Okay, the first thing we'll do is log into our Nokia 7750 service router, PEA, and let's take a look at our SAP ingress policy. Configure QoS SAP ingress 10. Okay, let's go info. And we can see we've created a Q2, all default parameters, and a Q3, all default parameters. We've created a forwarding class AF, which is assigned to Q3. And we've created forwarding class EF, which is assigned to Q2. We look at our match criteria. You can see on our entry 10, we're matching on protocol UDP, with the destination port of 16384 and the action will be to put it into forwarding class EF. Entry 20 will match on protocol TCP with a destination port equal to 53. The action will be to put it into forwarding class AF. So let's back up here. Let's just make sure that this has been applied. So we want to look at our ePipe service, pipe one info. And we can see under our SAP 116, ingress, we've applied the policy, QoS 10. Okay, so what we want to do now is let's take a look at how the traffic's being received into the queues of the SAP ingress policy and being forwarded out. So if we look at monitor, service, ID 1, SAP 116 rate repeat 1. 
Okay, so let's take a look. So what we can see is by default we're offered into the queue, low priority, 7,811 packets a second with a 128 byte packet equals 8,000 kilobits per second. Also in Q3, we're receiving offered at low priority the same rate of 7,811 packets and both are being forwarded out. So we can see we're receiving altogether 16,000 kilobits per second that are being split between the two queues. Okay. So that'll be being sent across the network to PEB. On PEB, the traffic will be, be placed into the forwarding class of EF and AF. We also have a pre-configured SAP egress policy. So let's take a look at that. Configure QoS SAP egress of 10. Let's take a look. Info. So very simple, we got created a Q2 again and a Q3. And anything that's placed in the forwarding class AF will go to Q3, and anything that's placed in the forwarding class EF will get into Q2. If we look at the default settings of the actual queue, so we'll go info detail, what we can see for Q2 is it's auto expedite. It's going to take the priority of the forwarding class. If the forwarding class is expedite, it will be an expedited queue. If the forwarding class is best effort, it will be a best effort queue. So Q2 will be an expedited queue because it's using forwarding class EF. And then if we look at Q3, it's also auto expedites and it will be best effort because it's using or forwarding class AF is sending to the Q3. Check to make sure that this has been applied to the ePipe. To the service ePipe 1. And we can see it's been placed into under the SAP 116 as egress QoS 10. Okay, so one other thing we need to check here is under our port 116, which is our SAP, we've added this. So the maximum egress rate of traffic can only be 8,000 kilobits per second. So that's the maximum rate that can egress the port. So that leaves the default scheduler with a decision. It's going to be receiving 16,000 kilobits per second aggregate of the two streams, but it can only send out 8,000 out the PEB SAP egress port. So what we need to do is let's take a look at how it's working right now. So we'll go monitor service D1 SAP 116 rate repeat 1. So we can see that Q2 being forwarded into the queue at 7,812 packets a second, which equals 8,000 kilobits per second. But our egress queue of 3 is dropping all packets. And as we know, Q3 is using forwarding class AF, which is a best effort queue, and Q2 is using EF, which is an expedite queue. If we go back to our policy, QoS SAP ingress and we go to our queue 2 we go info detail we can see that there is no CIR it's just using a default of a max and the same with Q3 info detail so what we're seeing here is that there's no within CIR so everything is being scheduled at above CIR so what we want to do is let's go to our best effort queue which is Q3 which we're under right now and what we're going to do is set a CIR so let's go rate and we'll set our PIR to 8000 and we'll set our CIR to 8000 as well everything will be within CIR for Q3 Q3 will be scheduled within CIR, but now Q2 will be scheduling at above CIR, even though it's an expedited queue. And because the kind of card we're using is an IOM3 card, it will be using the IOM3 standard for scheduling. So let's go back. So let's go monitor, service, ID1. SAP 116 rate repeat 1. 
And as we can see now, our Q2 is dropping all packets. And now the egress best effort queue of Q3 is forwarding all traffic, now being scheduled within CIR. Thank you for watching this video. Content for this video was adapted from the Nokia Quality of Service course. You can access the complete course via any of the three learning formats shown in this page, as well as get remote private access to a service router lab to complete the course lab exercises. If you're interested in obtaining an SRC certification, this table identifies the recommended courses and required exams for each of the five available certifications in the program.